Hello, everybody. Seven people. While people start coming in, why don't you say hey and tell me where you're from. I can't see any of you, of course, but I can see your comments. So come on in. Don't be shy. Hey, now I see Terry from Kentucky. Brianna, hey girl. And I see Dion, hello. Washington, D.C., what the heck? How'd I make it all the way there? You guys are making me so happy right now. Um, I'm just going to let a few more people come on and we're going to get started. I have a lot to tell you. So, who has their nails done? Tell me. Come on. Come on, nail techs. You got your nails done? Yes. Okay. What color, Dion? Brianna, Terry. All right. I love it. I love it. You're starting out real good being a mobile artist. I'm telling you. Alexis. Hey. Oh, white with rhinestones. Okay, Crystal, you're doing yours today. Fantastic. So at any time, you can go ahead and ask me questions as I'm talking. If it starts to be a lot, I have a little friend that's helping me out with the answers here. So um, we're going to just give it a few more minutes, 3.03 right now. Dion, how do I know you? How do I know Washington, D.C. and Kentucky? Where do I know you guys from? Tell me, tell me. How'd you hear about it? From Booksy. Okay, wonderful. I love it. I don't know where you said. That's awesome. This is good. You're doing your nails today. We won't even talk about my feet right now. I, I need to do them. My hands and feet are usually always done, but it's just been, it's been busy. All right. Well, guess what, guys? I'm going to start with you. Well, I just want to say thank you for taking time out of your day to spend with me today and talk about being mobile. My name is Tracy Sturdevant. I have been in this beauty industry for like ugh, 27 years. I'll say, honestly, I've been mobile since the beginning, but my story is that when I started being mobile, nobody knew about that. I mean, it's still very new. It's still something that people can do now, and it's a growing industry. So I was a single mom, and I needed to like make money, so I kind of put being mobile on the back burner, but I still was interested in it. So as the industry grew, I started to work for mobile spa companies because the best way, you know, just like Vera Wang, the best way to learn is to work for somebody and get paid, right? So I started out that way. Um, <clears throat> and right now I am mobile probably half the time. Part of that is because with COVID, you know, there has been a little decline in business, but also more than anything, I'm just wanting to stay safe. I want to stay safe. I want to keep my clients safe, my family safe. So I don't take on as many customers as I could because I just want to stay safe until we get a vaccine or we know what we're doing, what's going on out here. People are taking it seriously, you know, all of those things. But anyway. How to become a mobile artist? Well, the first thing to do, guess what? A price list. Um, knowing what services you want to offer. Your price list needs to be consistent. Your prices should be based off the market, kind of, you know, what 
your demographics are, what, who are the people that you're trying to go after, um, your experience, your talent, the time and the cost of your products. You don't just pull a number out of the sky. You kind of see what salons are charging and being mobile, of course, there's options there because some technicians that I know who are mobile, what they tend to do is they will charge a, a travel fee. I personally don't charge a travel fee. And the reason being is because I kind of have pricing based off how much I'm willing to go into someone's home for. So there is a minimum cost in terms of me coming to your house. I mean, upfront, it's gonna be X amount of dollars before I'm even gonna go there. So um, I would think, I, I'm in Aurora, Illinois. So to Chicago, it's like 32 miles or so. So for me, I, I still don't charge a, tra a travel fee. I just go there and I try to book appointments accordingly. And then if I were going to Wisconsin or Ohio, um, somewhere that's past an hour, then you might want to add a travel fee, but that's still going to be completely up to you because there's things to consider. Like, are you going there for one person? Are you going there for a party? Because obviously if you're going to have a party of three or four, then maybe you're not going to charge travel fee. Maybe you're going to take it as, you know what, I've got four clients that are prepaid and I'm going to have X amount of dollars from going there. So you have to just think about all those things. Um, like I said in the beginning, what services you're going to offer? What are you good at? Don't just offer all kinds of services and you're really not that great because everything matters when you first get started with your business. So make sure that if you're going to be offering, let's say, the basic manicure, pedicure. Okay, great. Everyone should know how to do those really well. But if you want to add acrylic, if you want to add nail art, um, I'm an esthetician too. So I do facials, waxing, you know, body treatments. If you're going to add all that stuff, number one, be good at it. Number two, make sure it's something that you really can accommodate the client with going to their house or their private space that you're going to be going to to do these services. Um, make sure that you have a description of the services. So you have some work to do in terms of becoming mobile. You want to make sure that all of those things are covered. You, you have it ready to go because even when you're ready, there's going to be times that they're going to ask you questions that you hadn't prepared for, but you don't want to wait to do that. You want to make sure that you have all these things. So price list, what services? Um, are you going to charge a travel fee, a description of the services, and most importantly, a booking system? When you start, of course, you can always just use your cell and you can get text messages, right? Well, after a while, that can be annoying to a certain point because one, do you want everyone having your cell phone number? Um, two, people will text you at all times of the night, all times of the morning. And you're going, are you serious? But they're not thinking like that. They're just thinking, okay, let me get this done. I need to message, you know, Tracy and I need to book an appointment. So they just go ahead and they text you. And so you have to be mindful that they're looking at it from a 24 hour open standpoint, even though you have business hours, everyone doesn't think of it that way. Again, what hours do you want to work? Your schedule, huge. So when you put in place a booking system like Booksy, which is absolutely amazing, Booksy does it all for you. I mean, when I say all, you put in the work, but it'll be done with a click of a button. You can put um, all your services, how long those services take, the cost of the services, the description of the services. 
I actually use my app, my bookie, Booksy system. I not only have in-home services, I also have education. So if somebody wants continuing education and they're trying to get hours, if they want to go through me because I'm a licensed instructor at a school and they're looking to get licensed to become a licensed technician, I have it all on there and it is fantastic. And that's just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to Booksy. I've used other booking systems and no system I've used in the past has been as interactive, been as easy, because I'm not tech savvy. I, I promise you I'm not. Um, nothing has been as supportive. The person who signed me up for Booksy, oh my goodness, calls me on the phone, has a conversation. You even have customer service person that you can talk to and all these people are here to help and guide you through this entire thing. You can use it to promote your business on social media. There's links, there's, it's endless, it's endless. And I'm telling you, Booksy's international. I love that um, if a customer is using the Booksy app and let's just say they're from New York and they come to Chicago and they want the best nail tech in town on Booksy, they're gonna see my name. And I love that. So make sure that you get a booking system as well because you don't wanna have those late night phone calls or those interruptions with your family and friends or when you're working, they can just do it. You can also set it where they have to do a deposit, um, you have to confirm appointments, I'm telling you, once you go into this app, you sign up with Booksy and it it's amazing. It just takes all the guesswork out. The other thing, your demographic, who are you going after? What does your specific clientele look like? Um, what area of service? Maybe you only want to work in your neighborhood. Maybe you only want to work in your subdivision. I don't know. You have to think about all of those aspects when it comes to being a mobile artist. The next thing, the other important thing, it's your kit. And can I tell you, I just love my kit because I just think it's so amazing. Um, my kit has just about any and everything in there. I think even though I am trained on all nail systems, pretty efficiently, I limit what I offer because I I didn't necessarily want all of those things on my menu. So I do offer acrylic, obviously your basic manicure, pedicure. I have spa manicures, spa pedicures, gel polish, and I will do dip. But again, all those things no matter how big or small, simple, whatever, you need to be able to bring that stuff with you, knowing how to package it so that it looks clean and organized. It's so important because when you start pulling stuff out of your kit, your clients are watching you. They want to see how quickly can you set up and how quickly can you break down? Because I don't know why, but sometimes they'll love you. I have clients that even they have lunch for me, you know, whatever, you know, um, because I've been doing their nails for quite some time. But uh, <laughs> it's like when you're done, it's like they want you out. I, I don't know. It's the weirdest thing. However, they don't say anything mean. It's just something you can kind of feel. So everything about your kit needs to be quick, efficient. You need to know how to work from your kit. Um, I have something really kind of cool. I'll show you if I can pull this out. <clears throat> Inside my kit, I have a little basket. So this kit, this basket has like some of my essential things. It has cuticle remover. See that? This is what I mean by your kit and efficiency knowing those things to use that 
are small, you know, so that you can package things well. I have like my alcohol and like a little small spray bottle. This is a must have, just saying. Um, I have, you know, my nail brush in here, all of my base top coat, just those basic things that those are in here. The other thing that I have, love, this is again, you know, efficiency, cleanliness. These are my buffers. These orange ones are a 180 grit and these green ones are shiners. So if your client is going to do like a high shine buff, then that's the buffer I have and you can throw them away. With COVID um, and the research that I've done, in the past, we have, you know, let's just say you're using it. It's a one-time use, right? We've given those things to the customer. Don't. Just throw them out. I wouldn't even throw it out in their garbage can. I would have my own little plastic bags that I have, and I put that in my kit when I leave, and then I'll just discard it later because you don't want your customer in any way to not use something properly and then there's an issue. It's You, you need to be very mindful of things like that. But those are my buffers. Then I have my base and top coat in these little containers. Like everything almost that I have is in a container. Love it. I even have, these are by Rejuvenate. <clears throat> these are disinfectant wipes for our industry. I mean, you can use them in a the home, but it's specifically for our industry because of the things that we're exposed to in terms of bacteria and things like that. These are a, I forgot, I think they're like a 50 second or um, 30 second contact time. And so these are great for wiping down areas. Usually when I go into an area, I make my assessment. If I'm working from a table, obviously I'm going to be wiping down that area myself. I don't care how immaculate a house is or how it looks. You always want to wipe down anything that you're going to be working on. Um, sometimes it might even just be your lap. And then, of course, you don't need to wipe anything off. But when it's a table or any type of structure you're going to be working on, you always want to wipe down. I use these wipes as well for um, wiping down my kit after I leave an area. You know, when I leave and I get outside to my car, you want to wipe down your kit with a disinfectant wipe. You can use this one or Clorox wipes or any of that kind of stuff. Um, let me just see here. How do you comfortably give a pedicure in someone's home since you are only bringing the football and you don't know what chairs they have or if they have a stool? Okay, that's a very good question. I actually do have a little step stool that I bring, um, but I will, off, will oftentimes communicate with the customer and just kind of see, you know, where you're going to be. Let's just say I go into the house and I don't bring my step stool in with me. Your car is nearby. You can just go and grab it if you're going to need it because it, it's simple. It's not it's not that hard. I think sometimes we just kind of overthink it. Um, we overthink the fact that you already have something to work on, and that is your lap. If they have a couch and a chair, you're good to go. So I hope I answered your question, Stephanie. If if you have any other questions, um, definitely please let me know. Where can I find those containers? I know, aren't they amazing? I'm sorry. Um, these came from Joanne's Fabrics. I believe you can also get them on Eline, which is like a supply company. Let's see, Dion. What is the best traveling kit? Well, I'm going to say best is number one, what's in your budget. Number two, what can fit your stuff. Number three, what you like. 
I had this little kit. I don't know if you guys can see it. See that? It's on wheels. It pull. It's it pulls. And it's got two compartments, two separate sides. I've had this thing for like 15 years. But, you know, I'm also that person that probably still has their Barbie doll because I just take care of everything like Christine. However, I did just order a really cool bag that I've been wanting for a long time. And that is by Zuka. That's Z-U-C-A. It is well known for um, a really amazing travel case. I like it because it comes with the one I picked has like five different compartments and then it will hold a weight up to 300 pounds. So you can actually sit on it and use it as a chair and it's on wheels. The one I picked also is um, TCA approved so I could check it if I wanted to. So I absolutely love it. Let's see. Do you have a separate license to do mobile visits? No. In the state of Illinois, you can be mobile. You have to just check with your state to see what the guidelines are for offering mobile services because they're all different, very different. I hope that answers you. Okay, great, Jennifer. Um, let's see. Is it hard to become licensed? I'm certified at the moment. No, Dion, it's not. It's not hard to become licensed. You just have to um, either go to school or, you know, right now, especially a lot of online courses are being offered. I myself, I'm also doing um, a self-study program for people in Illinois that want to get licensed and they let's just say they've already been doing nails and they really don't want to go to school they just want to be licensed and guess what i have a self-study program that you can do and get you licensed get you ready for state board so that you can be licensed so if anyone's interested in that you can always contact me um let's see what else oh you gotta see this i got all the stuff isn't this hold on this is just one of my little cases look at how cute that is so this rolls out and there's polishes in there so i have gel and gel polish and the matching regular polish in here this holds eight i don't necessarily recommend this company that i bought this from obviously the 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 products are very sturdy but very expensive because the freight because i think this comes from like i don't know like poland or somewhere i did find these on i found some on aliexpress if, if anyone's interested now the other part of your kit that means everything Ta -da! this is amazing like amazing so this holds whoops, this holds 24 i have two of these that i carry in my car at all times i love the handle on it it zips okay and then it's got like this whoops let me see if i can do that here we go it's got these little holes so each thing can be put in there. These are my absolute favorite Entity Beauty. Love it. So these are all my gel polishes. I actually numbered them because you want to have a swatch. You, you, you've got to have this, guys. So I numbered all of my gel polishes and I have swatches for them. Because then that way you go somewhere, let's just say they didn't let you know what color they wanted, you know, for whatever reason, maybe it was a last minute booking. I don't know. So I bring this in and these are the options. That's it. Like I said, what is this? One, two, three, four, five, 25 colors, right? In 25 colors, I don't care what season it is. They should be able to pick something. Now, 
I'll be completely transparent. Obviously, I just showed you that other kit, that, that other case that has eight more. I probably have about 35 colors that I have with me at all times. Because, you know, you make sure you have glitters and, you know, stuff like that. Um, let me just see where some... Okay, let's see. Somebody was asking me something. Hey, Ebony. <laughs> yes, Dion, you just finished yours. Awesome. She said she just finished her um, her swatches. So, again, like I said, your kit has got to have everything. And then I also have, like, little extra. This bottle is. I didn't buy it. I mean, obviously in the past, I probably bought it from Sally's, but I carry this as well so I can have that refill on hand just in case something spilled or something didn't get filled. And then I have my refill for my cuticle remover. I also bring um, additional alcohol. Um, and then, of course, duh, you got to have your lamp. I always keep my lamp covered. After each customer, I wipe it down so that it is clean and ready to go for the next person. That goes in there. Oh, that's in my kit. See that? I have already have pre-cut foils. You can buy them pre-cut or do them yourself. It's a lot less expensive. I have cotton pads and I also have um, no lint wipes in here. So everything is in here ready to go. All right, um, last but not least in your kit, your implements. Make sure you have it. Now, I did find this other thing the other day and I, don't ask me where I got this from because I don't know, but this is really cool. I'm gonna put my disinfectant in there. So then that way I can have it on hand. Now, um, I will be sharing with you like a list of things that you should have in your kit. One of the things that I definitely recommend is having at least two to three sets or at least the number of sets that you're going to need for your services that day. And then if you're out, let's say you only have one appointment and then you get, you know, hit up on Booksy and you get another appointment. Make sure you have an additional set of uh, sanitized and disinfected tools. The other thing is, like I mentioned earlier, if you were going to do something where you had a, quite a few people, if you don't have that many sets, you could always bring your disinfectant. So then that way, in between clients, like let's say you're, you have two sets, right? So then your first set, you clean them with your nail brush, soap and water, rinse them really well, dry them off, put them in your disinfectant and then use your other set that's already ready to go. And then by the time you're done, that one's, that one's ready. So it's, it's, it's seamless. It's not that big of a deal. Um, I guess the other thing obviously in your kit should be the products that you're going to be using for the services that you offer, putting everything in a container for safety, organization and cleanliness, like I showed you before, the swatches for the nail polish. And this has happened to me several times, what I'm about to say. You've got to make sure you stock your kit <laughs> when you're done. I promise you. Um, I have left before, left Aurora, went to Chicago, knowing I'm doing a full set. I did not have the acrylic in there. I, I don't know what I did. So luckily, I just, I got there early because I always try to get to an appointment 15 to 30 minutes just depends on where, you know, if I don't know where I'm going, I've never been there before. But I happen to be early, like really early. So I Googled where there was a Sally Beauty or no, it wasn't even Sally Beauty, a beauty supply store, walked in there and they had a kit, like a really small enough liquid and monomer, you know, monomer and polymer that I needed in order to do the service. But I'm telling you, restock your kit. Um, I see that my sister has logged in. Oh my goodness. 
she can attest to this because I've been like, oh, I love my nail polish. You know, it, it happens. It, it happens. But it's just one of those things that you need to just double check because you'll get busy and you'll be like, oh, my goodness, why did I take that out? You know, so just make sure you have it. I in my house. Typically, I have stuff if I want to do my own nails so that I'm not touching my kit at all for my own personal use. Obviously, we you can do that, but that way it kind of limits if anything is going to get missed or I'm going to forget to restock it or whatever, you know. Any questions, guys? Oh, don't hate girl, hate me. <laughs> that was my sister. You know how it is. <laughs> um, let's see here. Any additional questions? Come on, talk to me. All right, I'll just keep on going. Another important thing is to insure yourself. Listen, this is your business. And you're out here and you might think that everything's all good with you and your best friend and blah, blah, blah. But accidents do happen and you want to make sure that you're insured so that you don't get sued in the event that something goes awry personally. So um, I have my insurance with Hands on Trade. It's only $145 a year. It will insure me for $2 million. And I believe there's like, um, you can add like a caveat to that. And what I mean is, so I have done services for senior celebration here in District 204 for, I don't know, 15 years. So I put together other technicians, you know, come and we do nails and massage and all this other stuff. So what District 204 wanted was me to add them on my insurance additionally. And it was only an additional $10. It was it was nothing. So um, anyway, um, that is something that you can do. Check with your insurance company. I would price around, but Hands On Trade is amazing. It's a small business. They've been in business for, I don't know, I think 30 years. And, and they're very, um, they communicate with you very well. They're amazing. So I, I love supporting them. They're great. And it's a very easy renewal. They send you reminders, like all that kind of stuff. So definitely be insured because you don't want to find yourself thinking that you're going to be covered in the event that, oh, okay, I'm driving my car there, so that's covering me. Not really. You want to have insurance for you as a technician being, you know, doing the work that you're doing and it and make sure that all of your products are covered. I mean, this box right here, let me just tell you, I'm so serious right now. This right here, my angel foot file, you guys know how much that costs. And then each individual tool, I'm also a CMP. I have all those tools. This is thousands of dollars just for tools. So you want to make sure all that stuff is insured so that in the event that something happens, that you're okay. I see someone, Judy says, hi, Tracy, I woke up this morning. I'm a salon owner and I decided that I wanted to go mobile. And here I am today listening to you and what you're talking about. So specialized in here. We've been here, Braden and Dreadlocks, but I'm a bit confused how to get started with service. Oh, which service should I pick? I think that's what she said. Um, I would just start with the basics. And that's just manicures and pedicures. I would just start with that. You would be surprised at just those services alone. You don't even need to add anything else. You can be so busy. And with the situation being what it is, I'm just going to say this. If you are licensed, you're professional, you're on time, and your kit is clean and organized, all those things make for a perfect recipe for you to be able to be successful.
without question. Um, the other thing that last but not least, of course, this kind of falls into that is about marketing yourself like a boss. Marketing yourself, let me tell you something. You need to tell everybody what you do. When you see a realtor, right? They're, they they send out emails. Hey, just letting you know I, I had a career change. I'm, I'm your new real estate agent, blah, blah, blah. This is our business. If you are passionate about it, you let everyone know that you do nails now and or you're mobile now, whatever the case may be, and you will get business, I promise you. Maybe you start out with, you know, you're not charging as much as you're worth necessarily because you're trying to build. Completely understand that. But as you grow, you want those prices to grow with you. Um, I wrote on here, hats, shirts, always wear your shirt with your um, contact information. I'm going to show you. So I had, I have since rebranded, so I'm just using this as an example. But see that shirt? Red Vega Beauty, right there. Boom. In-home beauty services, straightforward. Boom. Listen, when you see the plumber, you see the garbage man, they got all their stuff, right? You need to have all your stuff on. You are a walking brand, and you need to let everyone know that. Business cards are not obsolete, guys. You go places, hand out your cards, two or three. You don't need to stockpile. Don't be cheap. Get you a business card with your contact information, with your booking information from Booksy on there, all of those things. You make sure it's covered, boom, you're good. Right now, I don't look, I don't even have one in front of me and I am the mask queen. When I tell you my mask collection is on point, no, I'm just kidding. Okay. Anyway, masks. I mean, look at that. They, they, it's just, it's covering everything but your eyes. Put your branding on your mask. I don't know. Put your phone number if you want to, whatever you want to do. Your website, social media, a car decal. It's endless and make sure your nails are done. If you say you do nails and your nails are chewed off and bitten, hello, I'm my best advertisement and so are you. Have your nails done. And guess what? If you don't like doing your nails, go pamper yourself and get them done. Just make sure they're done. Let's say you don't wear extensions. Let's say you don't like length. You just like them nice and short. Nice, short, clean, well manicured nails. That's what people want to see. So endless endless i didn't even go into all the ways um making sure that you're rebooking your clients when you're done with that service you know um let's see your communication prior to the appointment so important so important before and after say thank you say you know what thank you so much for you know booking me today you can send them out a little message. Make sure that your friends and family are sharing your posts. They want to cheer you on. We all have cheerleaders somewhere. I promise you, you do. So they want to cheer you on. Share your posts. Spread the word. Give them cards. You know, if you're doing their nails, give them cards so that they can hand your card out. and Or however way to um, get in contact with you. Make sure you have your COVID protocol. People are wanting to know, what are you doing? What can I expect to keep me safe? You know, that's one of the oaths that you take when you get licensed. Um, another way to market yourself, salons that don't, don't offer your services. Hey, knock, knock. You know, you can DM, you can Facebook, you can do all those things. I mean, we are to a certain degree on a stay at home, but there's nothing like, knocking on that door or your local pizza place that you're always going to. I don't know. Listen, it is endless. When I tell you my godmother is an alderman, 
uh, in this area. Do you know that she will have anywhere, depending on the situation in the past, not since COVID, but 200 to 3,000 people show up for her events. She does not have social media, but this is all about relationships that she's built. And let me just remind you, the relationships that we build with these clients doing their nails and their pedicures, their manicures and pedicures, it is priceless. I have been blessed to do clients three generations worth. And you all can have that. All of it, it all starts with you making a decision as to what you want to do, what you want to offer and going from there. Now, you can also partner with another licensed professional that does other services from you. Let's just say you have friends in a salon suite, right? And they do hair or they do waxing, facials, whatever. Partner with them. You guys can both promote each other so that your small businesses can grow. Join Facebook groups. I don't even know how many groups I belong to. I don't even keep up and sometimes I kind of forget, but those groups, your posts need to go in those groups. Social media is a beast. It is the most amazing free opportunity that you will ever have in life for anything. Um, I, I promise you, I, I see some of these posts and you know they're getting all these comments and it's not about the likes, but just the interaction and it's free. So trust me when I say there's business out here for all of us and it's growing even in a pandemic. I promise you, if you follow these steps, you will be so successful. You'll tell me, you know what, Tracy? Oh my goodness. Like, can we team up? And I'm going to go, no girl, because I'm busy too. <laughs> But anyway, um, Facebook groups, gyms that don't offer any service, any salon or spa services, yoga studios, they're showing all their feet. They want their pedicures, Pilates studios. I mean, these places are still open. So it's endless, guys. I really hope that this information helped you. You can follow me at Sturdivant Speedy Unlimited on Instagram. Uh, right now, you can still, I think, like my page, Red Vega Beauty, but that'll be changing to Sturdivant. And just message me. I am here to help you. We're in this together. We're growing together, all of it. So um, just let me know if you guys have any more questions because we're going to be wrapping it up. But I just want to thank you because I'm this was so exciting for me. Thank you so much for taking your time out of your day that you can't get back for spending it with me. And I hope that it was very helpful for you and that we can actually build a relationship, too. So anything you need. Let's see. Let's see. Who's my favorite nail tech? I am. <laughs> Judy, Tracy, I also took nail classes, which I never used to. So maybe you think I should switch from here to nails. I'm trying to see. Oh, hair to nails. Okay, Isis. Let's see, Isis. What are some rules and guidelines that you have on Booksy or that you discuss on the phone for your mobile services? Like having animals or children in your space. <laughs> well, I have not updated it on Booksy, but whenever I have a client text me, I'm just going to pull this up right now. Let's see here if I can get it. I have quick, re what I call quick responses because this is very important. 
for all of us so that we can stay healthy and continue to work. Hold on, give me one second. Here we go. So I'm gonna read it to you. Hi, and then I'll say their name. Thank you for choosing me as your nail artist and spa specialist. Here are just a few, few things to expect before, during, and after your service with me that is required. Amid the current pandemic, I want you to know that your health and safety is my first priority. Let me know immediately if anyone in your household, and I go through the questions, you know, just like we're, you're seeing everywhere. And I have, I have about seven bullet points that I talk about. Um, one, all fur babies need to be in a separate space from the service area. I said, even though I love pets, it's for everyone's safety and service efficiency. It's all about wording and making sure that you're professional and you're doing it with grace because no one wants to feel offended by having these things. They want to feel like you're welcoming it, but right now we need to be safe. And even if it's not right now, maybe you're gonna always do that, but I think it's important because let me just tell you how many dogs have jumped up on me while I'm trying to do a pedicure. Not fun always, not. <laughs> so believe me, I understand. Um, I even got a lot of requests for outside because of the pandemic. At first I was saying no, but I remedied that. And I'll, you can always message me and find out why. I ask what color they want. I ask that you, um, that you limit the number of people in your home during the service. Social distancing is a must, all of those things. And to be honest, I think that the pandemic has taught us that we need to be a lot more mindful of what it is we're doing and how we're doing it. I don't know that I would change that after. I, I don't because everyone does not have the same standard of sanitation and cleanliness and emotional, it's what is it called? Um, just emotional consciousness of someone else being in the room and their behavior, you know? So there's a lot of things to consider. However, I would not change it for the world. I absolutely love being mobile. So I do have those things in place and I can share them with you if you want to message me. My Instagram handle, um, Dion, is Sturdivants, my last name with an S, Beauty Unlimited. <clears throat> so, yeah, I hope I answered your question, Isis, because um, it's a very good question. And it's definitely something that has to be addressed in your policies and procedures. Now, one more thing that I really, I, I didn't even write it down. It just came to me right now. You want your clients to also kind of sign a disclosure agreement or whatever you want to call it, because you're going to be taking pictures. You need this stuff for social media and they need to understand that because this is part of your business. So something that they can agree to not necessarily have to sign on a piece of paper when you get there, but something that can say by confirming your appointment, you agree to X, Y, Z, P, D, Q so that they're aware, you know, that you're gonna be using images to build your business and all of those things. Any other questions? Man, you guys are good. You're just pulling it out. It looks like someone, Judy, did you say you did hair and you're gonna to switch to nails? I'm not sure. Okay. Well, you know how to get a hold of me. Thank you so much for joining me, everyone. I really and truly appreciate it. I hope you have an amazing day. Oh, I almost forgot. Those of you that are in Illinois will get one CEU hour. So to redeem that, you're going to email Jose and um, you'll be able to get that, which is awesome. Time well spent. You are so welcome, Jennifer. Thank you. I appreciate it, guys.